Hello, I'm Brad Giesemann, Principal Security Engineer at Ghost Security. In this video, I'll demonstrate ReaperBot, an agentic AI project that aims to orchestrate AppSec testing workflows, leveraging our open source web proxy and tamper tool, Reaper. What I hope you'll take away from this is a better understanding of how AI agents work, how they can interface with tools to perform tasks, and the value and potential for being able to automate these kinds of security testing workflows. So to do that, I'm going to aim these tools at a purpose-built vulnerable app called GhostBank. It's available at ghostbank.net, and it's free for anyone with an invite code to check out. So look below for details. So what I'd like to show you is how we can use ReaperBot to automatically discover, test for, and validate that vulnerability in GhostBank using Reaper as the conduit. But first I want to explain the agent architecture a little bit under the hood so you can know what's going on. So ReaperBot is actually a team of agents written in the Pydantic AI framework. And what they do is they work together to solve the request of the user. And so what happens is, is the orchestrator is the one that interfaces with the user to take the request, break it down into a game plan, and then delegate those tasks to sub-agents. In this case, we have a discoverer sub-agent, which is in charge of enumerating hosts and probing hosts for being live. And then the tester agent, which is in charge of validating or testing findings and vulnerabilities. And both of these sub-agents interface with different APIs available on Reaper. And now these are just RESTful APIs. But in AI LLM parlance, these are called tools. And that means that the LLM has the ability to call or uh, hit these APIs to get data to perform tasks or to understand things about the state of the world. And Reaper is what is the conduit or the proxy that is used to interface directly with the target, in this case, GhostBank. All of these pieces work in concert to formulate the plan, carry it out, and provide the results back to the user. So let's talk a little bit more about what I have on my screen here. On the left here in my Firefox browser, I'm currently logged into ghostbank.net. Now this is my target. And what I have is configured Firefox to proxy itself through Reaper so that Reaper can capture and record all of my requests that I make to Firefox, but more on that later. Right here, what I have is the Reaper UI. So this is my interface to the proxy requests. I can replay requests and tamper requests and perform fuzz testing. And in this tab right here, I have the Reaper bot interface, which I showed you earlier. I'll put some links in the description below for, to these repos and their setup guides in case you wanna follow along by yourself. So let's first demonstrate how this vulnerability can be detected and exploited manually using Reaper. And then we'll do it with Agentic AI. So you can see what the steps are. So let's first show how we can just use Reaper to find and validate this flaw in the Ghost Bank challenge. So first we have the scan capability, and this lets us enter a domain to be scanned for live hosts. And in this case, it's ghostbank.net. So in just a few seconds, we have found there are three hosts that are up and running, listening on web ports and that are live. Ghostbank.net, api.ghostbank.net, and auth.ghostbank.net. What I want to do is come over here and make a sample transfer. We use $12 so that it's different from these. You can see here that I'm just moving money between my accounts. And the total balance here is still $17.35. But right here, we can see that there was a transfer that was successfully completed. Great. So if I come over to Reaper, I can see that it captured these endpoints, and we know about these endpoints, that api.ghostbank.net has a API v3 transfer endpoint that takes a post request. And that's really interesting. So what we can do is we can go over here into the replay. And you can see this is my actual request. Cookie is embedded in everything, and these are the parameters in the post body. So if I just hit replay original, Reaper is going to make another identical transfer. It's going to replay that similar post request. And you can see, again, the money has moved. The total has not changed, but we have a record of that transaction. 
Now that's very interesting. We want to go ahead and test that to see if there's any broken object level authorization problems. So again, if I come over to tests and I launch a, a test attack, I'm going to filter on transfer, pick this uh, post to the transfer again. Now I'm going to select an insecure direct object reference or BOLA attack type. You can see here that Reaper has already provided me with the included parameters of account to, account from, and amount. And it's asking me which ones do I think uh, are vulnerable or potentially susceptible to BOLA. So I'm going to pick account from and hit start tests. Now, if you look down here on the lower left, you can see that it is successfully able to enumerate account from IDs that are different from mine and transfer the money into my account. So you can see five uh, successful requests. Now look at this, 1735, when I click refresh, I'm now uh, $60 richer because we made five requests for $12 from other folks' accounts. So here we have manually tested and validated for a BOLA vulnerability in the transfer endpoint by enumerating and trying other account from IDs and tampering and replaying those requests in bulk. So that's really cool, right? That was actually pretty efficient, but let's see if we can do it with ReaperBot's team of agents. Now I wanna put out a disclaimer here that ReaperBot is experimental and is not to be used in production. And it's currently specifically designed for use with Reaper to test GhostBank in this specific scenario. So when we come to ReaperBot, when we want to interface with it, you can ask it questions or tell it to do specific actions and you can use natural language. So one of the things that we can do is ask it to scan the ghostbank.net domain for live hosts. And on the right, you'll see an audit log of what it's doing and the tools that it's calling and the agents that it's delegating to when it comes up with its response. So ReaperBot said, I'm going to invoke the discoverer agent, which is I'm going to hand off to the discoverer agent and say, hey, scan the domain. That's using the tool scan domain using the input ghostbank.net. And that's what it called Reaper to do. And Reaper said, yes, I successfully scanned the domain. And then the discoverer agent asked Reaper to get the live hosts via an API call. And it returned ghostbank.net, api.ghostbank.net, and auth.ghostbank.net. And then ReaperBot returned a response back to the user. So you could see that we coordinated from the UI to the orchestrator. It determined it only needed to talk to Discoverer, which called two calls, two tools on Reaper to interface with the live environment. What's interesting is that we can ask it basically the same thing in a different way. Instead of telling it what to do, we can ask it to find that information and the agents are smart enough to devise a plan and ask you to confirm, hey, you are asking for information, but for me to get this information, I need to do some work. Are you okay with me doing this work? And you can see it came up with very similar results. It's the three hosts that are live in the ghostbank.net domain. Very cool. So now we want to ask it to solve GhostBank automatically and tell me about its work. So we're going to ask it, which endpoints in the ghostbank.net domain are susceptible to BOLA? And write a technical report on the results of your findings. So I'm going to try to keep up with this as it goes and explain what's happening. It's going to ask us, hey, here's the game plan. Scan the domain, perform security testing on those endpoints that look susceptible. And if they are susceptible, compile a technical report. Uh, before I proceed, please confirm. So now what it's doing is it's invoking the discoverer agent to scan the domain, get the live hosts, get all the live endpoints that are in its transaction history. And from those endpoints, it's going to determine which ones have parameters and which ones are ideal for being tested. It's going to hand off to the tester agent and the tester agent is going to look at um, which endpoints are, are good candidates for the attack, formulate an attack, 
pick a parameter. In this case, it is testing account two on the transfer endpoint. You can see the results over here. And it's first testing like, hey, account two, that might be potentially vulnerable to Bola. Let's try account two. And as you can see here, it's only successfully able to enumerate one ID, which is actually my own uh, checking account ID. And so it was only successful one time. That's not enough to know if it's a, pers uh, a bull attack. So now what it's doing is it's switching gears and it's attacking the account from parameter and fuzzing multiple different account from IDs for the same amount. And as you can see, we're enumerating and successfully making five transactions six, uh, from other accounts that are not mine. So when I hit refresh, you can see I have 60 more dollars than I did before. And now we're, we asked it to write up a technical report, a finding of what it did. So the, the tester agent compiles all the, the, the data that it did from all the things, all the work that it did, and it sends it back to the orchestrator agent, which summarizes things nicely. In which case we could see the following endpoints were tested and the post API ghostbank.net v3 transfer was vulnerable, vulnerable to BOLA. It's because of the account from parameter. Here's some requests that I made. Here's some successful account IDs that were involved. These are the vulnerable endpoints in the ghostbank.domain. So there you have it. AI agents that can discover, test, and validate a bolo vulnerability in a running application in just a handful of seconds. I hope you found this demo of ReaperBot interesting and we'd love to hear your thoughts. So don't be shy, reach out in the comments or hit us up on LinkedIn. We'd love to continue the conversation and hear more about your use case. Thanks so much for watching.